We have all heard of a butterfly flapping its wings in one place, let's say Ohio in the USA. Then sometime down the line, let's say in Wales, the UK, a horrid storm breaks out. Thanks, Kaylee. Funny enough, this is called the butterfly effect and is one of the most common systems in chaos theory. However, the actual notion of a butterfly flapping its wings and creating a storm isn't as realistic as you might hope. All the other factors such as the wind, waves, ripples, even aeroplanes would have a larger impact on the weather than a butterfly would. The butterfly effect's defining trait is its sensitivity to initial conditions. Even the tiniest alteration in the initial situation will result in a wildly different outcome to the point where it's unrecognizable. The equations that govern weather are chaotic. This is why my butterfly will affect the weather in Wales over 3,500 miles away. Chaos doesn't just affect the weather, it's all over the place. You've probably seen chaotic pendulums, even snooker balls behave in a chaotic fashion. But the biggest thing after the weather is sport. Any kind of sport has a massive amount of chaotic aspects. Think of any underdog situation where they've come up and won the match. There are so many variables in sport that even predicting the result accurately is almost impossible. Think of the NFL game that happened recently, the Miami Dolphins versus the New York Jets. The Dolphins looked better on paper, but the Jets took a convincing 27-14 win. There are so many initial conditions that it would have been impossible to predict the whole game. Air pressure, jet lag, relationship issues, anything that would have caused the players to play differently or the ball to fly differently. If anything was different in the initial setup, the Dolphins might have won instead, but they didn't. So the butterfly effect isn't everything Chaos Theory has to offer. Chaos Theory also offers attractors. However, if you're like me, you may feel that these are slightly anti-chaos theory, as they are offering points of stability. There are two kinds of attractors, regular and strange, static and dynamic. Static attractors are pretty common. Things like friction are static attractors, as they tail off at a certain point. The best way to show a static attractor is with a mathematical formula. This formula is going to be x n plus 1 is equal to r times x times 1 minus x, where r is a parameter. So if we start with the parameter being 2 and x as being 0.25, we can follow this through and we'll end up where it levels off at about 0.5. This is a regular attractor. Doesn't seem very chaotic to me, but if we ramp r up to 3.3, we get a new sequence of numbers. And you can see that this is bouncing around between 0.82 and 0.48. We can even plot this on a graph and we can see as R increases, the attractor gets very chaotic. But more interestingly, strange attractors. This is where an attractor changes its position dependent on what the value is. An example would be of a store that opens up in a small town. This is now the attractor. People start moving into the town to be closer to the store and the town begins to boom. But over time, people start moving away because of how busy the town has become and they don't like it anymore. Now the countryside is the attractor. In the end, the town becomes so quiet that the store closes down. But then a new store sees an opportunity and opens up. The store becomes an instant success and draws loads of people in, blah blah blah. You can see that the attractor is changing its position dependent on the situation. We can even plot this and you will get this very nice loopy shape that is quite common when talking about chaos. And it is known as the Lorenz attractor. We could also get into fractals. They are like the symbol of chaos. They come out in a simple yet ongoing process that is infinitely long. Driven by recursion, fractals are images of dynamic systems. Some can be very simple, some can be very complex, but they are actually everywhere. For instance, trees, rivers, coastlines, mountains, clouds, seashells, hurricanes, the stock market, etc. Now the magic of fractals is that if you zoom in, you will just keep going forever. But you can actually zoom out and it will stop. This is where the Mandelbrot set comes in. This is actually the king of all fractals because it contains every formula that everyone can think of. Doesn't seem that useful, but a team of people at UCLA actually used all of chaos theory to accurately predict a 6.5 magnitude earthquake in California, as well as an 8.1 magnitude earthquake in Japan. And that seems pretty useful to me. So hopefully you've understood a little more about chaos theory and won't give the weather correspondent a hard time next time they get it so, so, so wrong. 
You should be getting mad at the butterflies, really. They did this to you. I'm just saying. Okay, so if you like this video, give it a like, and if you want to subscribe to me, don't be afraid. If you like the parts with my friend Kaylee, you should head over to her channel. She has videos about sleeping naked, Russian roulette, and even special relativity. Also, make sure to go over there and check out her video on MP programs, because it's got yours truly in it. See you over there. Until next time. Toodles.